Hey, what's up, Zach here, and today I've got a look inside the Nike Pegasus 40. Let's get right into them. Now looking at the uppers of the Pegasus 40, the main reinforcing element is really just the lace line. It is an integrated lace line like in the Nike Vapor lineup, so you do get a very strong tie down with that, and it is reinforced along that lace line as well as here into the runner's knot area. This does do very well with the runner's on, especially if you have an orthotic in there. Uh, but the rest of it is basically just kind of a woven textile layer. Now it is two layers of those woven textiles going almost into like a waffling configuration. It gets a little bit wider in the forefoot and it gets a little more dense around the, the lateral and medial side or kind of the rails of the periphery of the shoe. That does help with a little bit more containment of your foot. However, because there is such wide open pores of textile, if you look at the breathability test, it still does pretty well for a double layer woven upper, heating up 101.6 degrees, cooling down another 42.8 degrees. Definitely not the most breathable running shoe we've seen, especially in the Nike running space. However, for how much material really is in that uppers, it still does breathe pretty well. And we'll see later on the extended breathability test with the smoke machine, we'll see how it kind of comes out of the pores. So it, the shoe does kind of circulate air very well. It does not hold on to moisture whatsoever because of those huge pores. Now, if you look at it on the upper durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, the burr does not really rip through it too much. It definitely scuffs it up and gives it a little bit of a cowlick, but it, a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. Remember, these are road running shoes. So I think in terms of containment, because this is more of a strategic kind of open, less dense pattern here in the forefoot and then more dense around the periphery. And because the lace line is very strong, the containment isn't all that terrible. But getting into the midsole teardown in the Pegasus 40, I actually did this with the knife as well as with the x-ray machine. And the interesting thing is, is on the x-ray, I could see there was really no shank. However, in the rear foot, there is a very small, low profile, not very stiff shank going right above the zoom air unit in the heel. It's also another reason why when you see the bounce height test in a little bit, uh, the ball bearing didn't get very high because that board kind of zapped all the energy return that you would get from the zoom air unit just from a small ball bearing. However, what's interesting is, is this, you know, I guess called a shank is more just like stiff cardboard back here. I think that's why it's, it's not as visible on the x-ray, although you, you can see it a little bit there. The interesting thing is, is, you know, this is meant number one for a, a landing for heel strikers to give them a little bit of an easier transition into the mid stance portion of their gait cycle. However, I find that this shank in the back actually does more when you're a midfoot or a forefoot striker to keep the rear foot of the shoe stable. Uh, but we'll get to that in a little bit. The rest of the shoe is just an entire bed of React foam. If you look at that React foam uh, on the microscope, you can see it almost looks just like a piece of plastic with little kind of divots melted into it. That's usually what more of a plastic based foam will look like versus a phylon or a cushion where you can actually kind of see the, the cookie doughing or the pores inside of it, that EVA, which is pretty cool. But getting back to what I was saying about that setup on the bounce height test, in the rear front of the bounce height test got 26.5 centimeters, which really isn't that great given that it's a zoom air unit there. And then 39.5 in the forefoot. Now remember we've seen zoom air get into the high, you know, mid forties on the bounce height test. Now, usually when it's React foam plus zoom, you usually see that ball bearing not getting as high. And that's because I've always found React foam to be much more of a shock absorbing foam. I know Nike markets it as more of a, a energy returning foam. I found it more of a great shock absorber foam. It's comfortable. I feel like it absorbs shock better than most of their foams out there. And getting in the outsole tread of the 40s, kind of like a studded pattern going here all the way through the medial side of the shoe. And then mainly just flanges of rubber coming here on the lateral side until you get more into the midfoot, then it becomes more of a block pattern. Remember, this is a road running shoe, so it basically you just want the rubber to be able to transition step very easily. This does transition very nice. It is a very smooth ride, mainly because the rubber bends along the bend points of the shoe so well. So the transition step from a heel, midfoot, or forefoot striking gait on the rubber is very nice. Now, the durometer of that rubber is actually pretty high on the Pegasus, getting up over 17. If you look at it on the outsole durability test, 10 seconds high grit sandpaper, I mean, not a millimeter of damage on these. That's very good for a running shoe for rubber durability for sure. Especially because, you know, these pods or say these studs here on the medial side as well as in the midfoot and rear foot are very wide. So this rubber should last you a good long time. The React foam in the midsole should break down before the rubber does. And speaking of where the rubber meets the road, if you look at the speed ratio of the Pegasus 40 it comes in at a 3.07. Just pretty darn good for the profile of the shoe, I'd say, especially for a shoe with React Foam. These still feel very swift, very easy to pick up speed on, uh, especially if you're a lighter runner, unlike me, I think you can get a lot more speed out of these and you can do a lot more of these. We'll talk about this in the fit section as well, as well as the runnability section, but 
For a shoe with this profile, I really think it's actually a pretty impressive speed ratio. And speaking of how fast and breezy these shoes feel on foot, let's actually see where the air exchange is coming from. Let's see if this thing actually turns on. Yep. Yeah, you can see it's coming out the forefoot here pretty easily. It's actually coming out the sides of the shoes too. I'm about to smoke myself out, so I'm gonna get back to the fit section here in a second. <laughs> All right, but if I had to describe the fit of the Pegasus 40 in one word, it'd probably be forgiving. These are a pretty streamlined shoe. They do not look like they're going to accommodate many foot types. It does look like a more narrow product. However, because once again, that double layer woven textile in the forefoot and midfoot, these things expand very nice, especially because you can get that runners on in there, integrated shoelace eyelets. So you just don't have to crank on them to high heaven to get them to lock down. So a narrow medium foot, I think just go true to size. A 2E, if you want more room and go up a half size, my 2E with foot fit into my standard size on these with no cramping, maybe a little bit of break in, maybe a half hour, uh, that was about it. And then I was just fine. Uh, very pleasantly surprised with how forgiving the uppers are with these. Now, in terms of the snake bitten foot, I think in terms of four foot pain, if you were a four foot striker, then I think these are okay. Uh, in terms of if you're an ankle sprainer and you're a four foot striker, I still think they're okay because the React foam c compresses enough in there to kind of get a little more feel on the ground. There are better shoes out there, to put it that way. In, in terms of anybody that has, you know, more arch strain, arch pain, heel pain, Achilles pain, I do think with an orthotic in these, they do okay. And when they're new, or if you are a very lightweight runner, then I think it's okay. However, if you're putting any bit of force into this shoe, that React foam is gonna start to, to wear down a little bit. And so you're gonna need something to hold it up. There is no shank in these, right? So that foam is gonna start to bottom after a while. So I say if you're anything but a very efficient, lightweight runner that goes through their gait cycle pretty quick, then an orthotic in these will help out quite a bit. And that part of the fit profile, like I said, having a very efficient gait really brings me to the, the runnability section. I think that kind of correlates with the runnability a lot. These are fine for a heel, midfoot, or, or forefoot striker. It's just that they do their best work for more of a posterior forefoot striker, kind of getting it right where that zoom air unit begins because number one, they've got that, you know, kind of cardboard type shank in the rear foot to keep it just stable enough. You're coming down on the zoom air, so you're gonna get a little bit more of a durable and consistent strike out of it. I, it just the way the shoe fits there, it, it's just very easy to kind of get through that type of gait cycle. If you're somebody running through an entire gait cycle going from heel strike mid stance and then push off, the React foam in the middle is gonna start to wear down over time. If you're somebody with an incredibly efficient gait, these are gonna reward you more. I would say the more efficient, the more fluid your gait is, the more accomplished runner you are, the more you're going to like them. The lighter of a runner you are, the more you're gonna like them. The stronger your legs are, the more you're gonna like them. These things pick up speed and they pick up speed very, very quick and they are very easy to run in. They are a very unencumbering shoe. That's probably why it is such a popular shoe. It's probably why you see so many of them out there because they fit so many runners very well and because they are so unencumbering of a running shoe. I, I'd say if you are a midfoot striker and an orthotic in these, much better. If you're a heel striker with an orthotic in these, I think they do much better over the long run. I, I think in terms of you're using these and you're getting new pairs a lot or you're using these just as a fresh pair for like a 5, 10K, then I think they're just fine. I think that's where these do their best work in that 5 to 10K range. I think you can really get all the benefits out of them without any of the drawbacks of the Pegasus. So um, I think that that's kind of where these stand in terms of runnability. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Pegasus, especially because Nike has come out with so many running shoes this year that fit so many different running profiles. It is pretty crazy in terms of what they've put into their running shoes this year and in terms of what you can kind of get back out of them. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to see a sibling to the Pegasus 40 go under the knife, the Nike Infinity Run 4, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse. It's my shoe seance.